this circuit, we have three inputs, x1, x2, and x3. The output has been pre-chosen as a voltage in the 9 ohm resistor on the bottom right. Why not? Let's solve the circuit. Let's find why not. It will come out, as we shall see, as a function of the three inputs, x1, x2, and x3. To solve that circuit, I choose a reference node, which I just happen to choose the one on the left. The voltage here on this middle node is given by the source. It's just x2. And we identify node 1 at the top, node 2 at the right, on the right. And then the branch current, let me call this IA. This will be IB, IC, and ID. Let's write out all of those terms. We will define them Vx is defined as simply the voltage V1 minus the value of the source X2. The current um, IA, by the way, IA, is simply defined as Vx divided by 7. Nice. And the current IB, the current IB is uh, a V1 minus V2 minus the source X3 divided by 6. That is our one. The current IC is um, an R branch current. It is X2 minus V2 divided by 8 by 8. ID ID is V2 minus 3VX divided by 9. We are ready to write the KCL equations of interest, which are two. KCL for node number 1 is simply currents going in. That is, X1 goes in. Currents coming out of that is 2, IA and IB. And the KCL for the second node, currents going in, two of them, IB and IC go in, IC and ID, ID comes out of that. We solve those two for V1 and V2. And with V1 and V2, we can then find uh, what is Vx, and with Vx we find everything else. We find, for instance, what is ID, and with ID, we can finally find a Y naught. Y naught needs to be defined there, so let me write that. Y naught is the product of 9 ohms and the current ID. Definition. Uh, let's enter all of those equations in, in CAS, in X CAS, and see what it makes out of that. Let's begin defining the x as v1 minus x2. Enter. Let's define y naught as 9 times id. d is a reserved name. I will call that idd. And ia is um, vx divided by 7. Check. ib is um, V1 minus V2 minus X3 divided by 6. Check V1 minus V2 minus X3 divided by 6. Enter. IC is parenthesis X2 minus V2 divided by A. X2 minus V2 divided by And IDD is... Um, V2 minus 3 times Vx divided by 9. Mm -hmm. We are ready to write KCL1 as a current going x, x1, current go out i plus ib. KCL2 is ib and ic going, and id comes out of there.
and from there we extract V1 and we extract a V2 which of course they come out as functions of x1, x2, and x3, the three imports. Now we can find anything. Now we can find why not. The output is this one. Let me simplify that. And let's say that why not is a normalized version of why not. Just simplify that. Look, the output as predicted is a linear combination of the three inputs. But if we care only for the transfer function between x2 and y0, we don't want the other two terms. So we make x1 and x3 zero to gain what is the transfer function between x2 and y0. We make those two other sources zero, and we gain that the transfer function in that case is 189 divided by 125. But instead of doing all of this and solving for the circuit with all the three inputs and making them zero at the end, it is more reasonable to make them zero at the beginning before we go through all the solution process. That is what we normally do. We want to know what is the transfer function between, let's say, in the original circuit between this source X2 and that voltage, why not? Then we make all the other sources zero, but only all the other independent sources, mind you. So this current source will become an open circuit, and this voltage source will become a short circuit. So that circuit will become something different like this. The current source X1 disappears along with its branch. The voltage source X3 becomes a short circuit, and that leaves us with a circuit that has only two nodes. I choose the one in the middle as my reference, and the one on the far right as node 01. We define currents IA, IB, and IC, and we are ready to write equations. Now we define the currents IA, IB, IC, the voltage Vx that controls the dependent source 3Vx and the output Y0. Now we can write the case scale equation for node number 1. Currents going in, 0. Currents coming out, Ia plus Ib plus Ic. Solve for V1. Extract V1 from the vector. And uh, we're ready to ask for the normalized version of the output Y0, which comes out, no surprise here, as a function of the only independent source x2. If we divide that y0 by the input, we get the transfer function that is exactly the same transfer function that we found solving this, the, the whole circuit and nullifying the sources x1 and x3, but much, much faster. This is the explanation why to find the transfer function between an input, in this case x2, and the output y0, we eliminate all the other independent sources in the circuit and then we solve um, for the output and divide the output by the input, in this case x2.